Hey everybody, Raven here. Today we're going to be talking about the different reasons why people might be investing in silver. It might be to maintain and preserve wealth, or it might be for that doomsday scenario that we really hope never happens, but it is something that should be talked about. And then also the different ways that you invest into silver. Now, here's the thing. If you're trying to do it to preserve wealth, and you like to dabble in a little bit of different stuff, there's always really cool things like premium silver, like the Zombuck uh, series here, um, you know, the Chun-Li, Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, licensed stuff. Um, also the uh, Lunar series from Australia. Premium silver, that's cool for collecting, but here's the thing. If you're trying to make your cost per dollar average be something that's sustainable and you want to have some silver in your grasp for if, you know, the worst case scenario happens and we have an economic collapse or whatnot, you're going to want to have generic silver like this, like the well-recognized one ounce buffalo silver rounds. Um, pretty much any coin shop, anybody that handles silver knows what generic silver is and will accept it. But the most widely accepted stuff is this right here. 90% constitutional, AKA junk silver, which is very important to have in your stack because like I said, God forbid we have a situation where the dollar fails and the only way that you're gonna be able to get any uh, goods or services is through trading gold and silver. Now most people, you know, if you have gold, you're going to have the gold for a big investment. You know, you're trading for a car, you're buying some property, a uh, tractor, what have you. Silver is going to be the, the precious metal that everybody turns to for trading for commodities and whatnot. And to give you an idea, you know, silver on average lately has been about 25 times face up to even 30 times face. So you're looking at $2.50 to $3 for a dime. So with that dime, you know that you'll be able to trade it for some goods like, you know, probably two dimes for a dozen eggs because that's about five to six bucks. That's about the going rate for a dozen eggs. Maybe a dime for a loaf of bread. It really depends on the situation. Um, you might have to give up two dimes. But it is important to make sure that if you want to be prepared and you also want to, like I said, preserve wealth and grow, uh, you know, your your savings, don't pass up the idea of doing generic silver. These premium rounds are only going to be worth what these are worth. God forbid that situation happens, that scenario happens to where, you know, you're only trading uh, silver for stuff. You will be able to get an ounce of silver out of this you know, in trade value. But here's the other thing. If people don't widely recognize what you're trying to trade them, you might not be able to use that premium silver unless you find the right person. And quite honestly, 90% junk silver, even Canadian stuff that's 80% like this roll of dime, half roll of dimes here um, is something that you can have because it is a sovereign nation. People recognize what it is. It's 80% silver. So, you know, versus this being two fifty dollars for a dime, this here is probably like a $1.50, $1.70, somewhere in there. But it still has intrinsic value, and it's something that people will widely recognize. That's what's most important when you're thinking about, you know, the worst-case scenario. Now, myself, I'm not a doomsday-type person, I but I do prepare for things because luck favors those that are prepared. And so I try to make sure that I have a certain amount of 90% silver. I even have 40% silver on hand, as well as generic uh, buffaloes and uh, what have you. Because God forbid, like I said before, that we fall into a situation where we have to use silver and uh, gold to trade for commodities and food. Um, so it's one of those things that you should really think about because honestly... Time after time, now this round here right now in this market goes for about $35 to $50 depending on the situation, the dealer, and what have you. But this is a what they would call a premium round and it's always going to cost you more money. This set right here of Buffalo 
is normally about four to five dollars above spot when these are more like ten to twelve dollars above spot. Um, sometimes you can get buffaloes on sale for just a few dollars over spot and you will be able to have the most bang for your buck, so to speak, when it comes to having more generic silver on hand versus every, you know, three rounds of premium, you could have gotten yourself in today's market an extra round of Buffalo generic if you just stayed with Buffalo's and or generic silver, you know, from your local coin shop. There's many different uh, silvers that qualify as generic, but I wanted to use the Buffalo because it's widely known, widely recognizable, and it's something, like I said, that everybody should have in their stack. Um, and also, for those of you that didn't know, U.S. 90% silver is the most widely recognized silver in the world. Almost anybody can look at it and know, you know, hey, that's a U.S. coinage. Oh, and it's made it out of silver. It's pre-1964. So I know that there's 90% in here. I know there's value to this versus trying to convince somebody that, hey, I paid $40 for this, so I should get extra consideration versus the 25 I paid for here. Nobody's going to care at that moment. They're literally going to say, this is worth this. If we are in a situation where everything comes down to bartering and trading for silver and gold, the numismatic and collector value will be thrown out the window. And I really, really want people to, you know, understand that the sky isn't falling, but you should definitely have yourself prepared. Have a to-go, uh, what they call a go bag that has supplies, camera, uh, not camera, <laughs> flashlight, uh, batteries, some food, a pew pew, um, you know, things like that so that you have protection as well as some water. Um, you might want to get yourself a couple buckets of uh, what they call prepper food um, that takes very little water or whatnot to prepare. And a lot of them have their own little packets in them that heat the food for you. So you don't have to waste your water on, you know, making your food available for you and your family. And water is a key. I keep literally 10 to 15 cases of water on hand because of where I live in Oklahoma. We have a lot of problems with, you know, uh, really bad weather out here. So if something happens, you know, it's not that you're doing something that's kind of crazy it's actually preparing just in case something happens because you really never ever know i hope you like this video and if you've gotten this far and you're not subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up leave a comment down below and let us know what you like to collect and what you think about when you're trying to make sure that you're ready for something unfortunate like always Oh, if you want to correspond, it's ravenhawkcoins at gmail.com. P.O. Box is 721-296, Norman, Oklahoma, 73070. Like always, please make sure to take care of one another. We'll see you real soon. Ravenhawk Coins, have a great day.